Okay, so now that we know the philosophy of warrior selling, let's launch into the 15 beliefs of a sales warrior. These are the core truths every sales warrior lives by, and they form the backbone of every single tactic and mental toughness technique you'll find in our warrior selling program. Here we go. Number one, the definition of selling is to give certainty plus education with rapport. See, when certainty is lost, all is lost. Think about it. When you become uncertain in your job, you quit. When your employer becomes uncertain in you, you get fired. When prospects become uncertain about the market or about what you're selling, they don't buy. When clients become uncertain in your status as an advisor, they cancel. This is why certainty is everything. It's the guiding need that every human being has to have to feel safe and secure in life. When you give your customers certainty, you give them happiness. You give them freedom. You give them life improvement. You need to make your prospects feel safe to buy from you. And the only way you can do that is to give them ultimate certainty in their decision to choose you over everyone else. Certainty is nothing more than being their trusted advisor along the way. This means letting the customer know what's coming next in the process. It means making them feel safe with you. It means giving them so much clarity that they'll follow you anywhere. The next part of the equation is education. Selling means constantly teaching your prospects something new. When you learn something new, no matter what it is, dopamine is released into your brain. Think of dopamine like the reward chemical. Have you ever heard of the term an aha moment? That really satisfying split second when you finally figure something out? That's dopamine at work. You can give your prospect an endless supply of dopamine highs. All you have to do is educate them. And the final piece of the puzzle is rapport. The definition of true rapport is one of the most misunderstood things in sales. So many people tell me, Jason, rapport is just whatever I have in common with my prospect. That's how we get on the same page. Look, here's the problem with that line of thinking. It doesn't actually move sales forward. It pauses them. And sometimes it even ends them. True rapport is understanding what the prospect wants. What is their outcome? What are they trying to achieve? And then it's about being in alignment with that vision so you can help guide them to total, complete life improvement by fulfilling that vision. When you see a soccer sticker on their car and decide to spend five minutes of the sale talking soccer instead of moving the sale forward, that's not rapport. That's a faux friendship. All great sales warriors don't just understand this message. They revere it and take it to heart. Customers can't argue with their own advice. And when you educate them on how your product or service is about to improve their life, that's the most powerful selling message there is. So Jason, here on the idea that the definition of selling is to give certainty plus education with rapport. I think all salespeople that are out there, they're so knowledgeable about their product, about their service, about what they're selling, that they're able to give education. But Sometimes it's the wrong education or sometimes it's not as strong. How can we strengthen and choose what we need to teach a customer in a certain situation? Well, the, you know, to me, what's really, really important, and this happens a lot, is that when, whenever you first you know, meet a customer for the first time, they're, they're obviously coming to you because they've got some sort of expressed need. They have some sort of, either it's a, it's a hidden need or it's admitted need, but there's obviously some kind of subconscious or conscious reason why they're, they're looking to, to make a change or buy from you. And that's, again, in the, in the consumer world, it's more of that kind of just looking buyer. But in the business to business world, it's more of the maybe request for proposal or their price shopping. They're just kind of checking things out. And, but what I found though, is that that you first have to, of course, ask a bunch of questions to figure out what do they know about what you're offering? You know, where are they in the buying process? But what's even more important is that how often have I heard salespeople say, you know, I just don't think they have enough pain. I don't think they have enough, uh, um, enough reasons why they should make a change. Well, that's where you come in. That's the education piece. So your job is to create more needs through your education. 
So looking at it from a consumer purchase perspective, when you're, you're out there and you're looking to buy a new car, you know there's something wrong with your current car, you're checking out new, new options, and then all of a sudden, you know, they show you the air-conditioned seats that you didn't realize that you could have. Or now, that you can get cars now with, with massagers in your, in your chairs, which is nuts to me. I didn't even know that was possible until I, until I drove a brand new car. And so that's that education that I'm talking about. And so the biggest thing I want people to get out of this is that figure out what your people already know, what your, what your customer already knows, but then you want to provide even more education that exceeds the cost of change, that exceeds the price uh, that you're charging. That's how you also can give them certainty and, of course, stay in alignment with rapport. Well, I love that and teaching them something even more. So uh, something that I've heard you say before is making sure that you're teaching people things that aren't already on the website. Right, because we talk all the time. Oh, our buyers today are so educated. They've spent so much time online before they ever talk to a salesperson. You're right. What are those extra things that we can truly become the advisor with instead of just rehashing everything that they can already read easily on our website? So I love that. Now, Jason, the other part of this definition of selling that is a little bit trickier is the idea of rapport. And I think I think it's a little bit trickier because there is not a sales book podcast, trainer, sales manager that is not talking about rapport. However, you're the only person I've ever heard speak about rapport in this way. Can you, can you say it again? Can you give us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So rapport is being on the same page with your customer. So think of it as we need to make sure we understand what is the outcome frame? What is the goal? Again, what is the customer trying to move towards as it relates to life improvement? And what are they trying to move away from? So let's use a business example. So let's say you're talking to a company and you're trying to sell them a new piece of software. And you you want to figure out what is really the outcome frame? What how What's the speed they're trying to improve in their organization? What's the the gross margin they're trying to improve? What's the profitability they're trying to improve? You're trying to figure those things out so that you can then align how your product and service will help them achieve that goal. So as long as you're always in rapport with them, with what they're really trying to accomplish on a bigger chunk, on a bigger level, uh, then you can add all the certainty and education to that. Another way to look at it is if you come across with lots of certainty and education, meaning that you're very dogmatic, right? You believe so much in what you're saying. You, of course, have all the evidence to back up what you're saying, all the claims and all the research. But you're, you're out of rapport with them means you, you really don't know what their goals are. They're not going to pay attention to you. They're not going to listen to you. So it's really important to have certainty plus education with rapport. Well, that, that feels so much more in alignment with me with what feels natural as a sales professional. I can remember um, some sales training I went through years ago, and they taught us um, because we would cold walk into offices or meetings. We were off on site all the time in other people's offices. Um, I was a business to business salesperson then, and I would walk in and they said, okay, the most important thing is you look around the office and find something that you can connect to. So whether that's a picture frame and they have a child the same age as you, or whether you see a college flag or a letter from, you need to pick up something so you can connect with them. And I remember trying that over and over and then feeling so awkward of like, okay, well now let's talk about the product. And it was, it, it, it started us on a weak foot. It started us off on the wrong page. And then it was a lot harder to, for me to feel strong and powerful going into my sales message after starting on such a weak start. Yeah. And the reason is because it felt ingenuine. It's almost like, you know, you were, you were, um, you know, hanging out at a cocktail party and just having this kind of fake faux friendship conversation where two people are look, we know we don't want to talk about this. Why are we talking about this? And it's just this very kind of fake conversation. I mean, I, I've heard trainers say the same thing that you want to, you're right. Look at, look at things on their walls. And you know, if they've got lots of trophies, that must mean that they're a, you know, kind of significance driven, driven type buyer, uh, you know, and you got to kind of model and match those things. And, and, uh, yes, to me, in my opinion, that only throws you off because the one thing I do know about selling to business to business, and this is important for everyone to hear. And that is the, the CEO's time is everything. And if you go in there and you start talking about, you know, how was their weekend or, hey, did you catch the last Cowboys game? Well, now they're also thinking that you're not, you're not a hard worker because they don't have weekends. CEOs work seven days a week. And so all that kind of faux friendship type stuff is actually going to hurt you as their business advisor going forward. 
I love that. So going forward for all of us is certainty plus education with rapport. And of course, the rapport is making sure you know what their mission is and that you're getting them closer to that mission. That's rapport. Perfect. 